making a small connecting rod in the workshop part two. This rod was made just to demonstrate one way of making such an item. The method I use is not ideal but okay for the video to show the general idea. Looking on the bright side though, the job worked out well. I'm going to use a method to round the end of the connecting rod that is particularly dangerous. But it's only dangerous if you do it wrong. Fitted into the machine vise on the milling machine is a twist drill of 930 seconds of an inch in diameter. Now I need to machine a simple bush to fit over the twist drill. Normal procedure, centre drill first, followed by twist drill, followed by parting off. Before continuing with the video, you really do need to read this. Health and safety warning. What you are about to see can be a very dangerous process. Full PPE, personal protective equipment, must be worn at all times. In this, and every other video that I produce, I am only showing the way that I personally carry out these often complex and potentially dangerous model engineering jobs. I do not recommend this method in any way. I cannot accept any responsibility regarding injuries sustained by anyone attempting to follow these instructions. If in doubt, please seek professional help, or make the part with a file. Here is a drill shank sticking up out of the machine vise, and when I fit the big end part of the connecting rod on the drill shank, you should now be getting the idea of what I'm about to do. This is a very small engine, and therefore the connecting rod is also very small, so I'm fitting an extension handle to it, because I need to be able to control whereabouts this is relative to the cutter. When machining the end of a connecting rod or a coupling rod from a model locomotive, for instance, this is the procedure that I would use, but I wouldn't do it quite like this. First of all, I would remove the bulk of the material using an abrasive device like a grinding wheel or a vertical belt sander. But in this case, for the purposes of the video, I'm leaving it as it is because what I'm going to show are some errors that can happen when you're doing these sort of jobs. And the first error is like this, I'm putting far too much pressure on the cutter, so the end of the rod is chattering. It's a good idea to use a proper end mill for this, because it has more cutting flutes. If you use a slot drill, which has only usually got two cutting flutes, then you may run into trouble. Watch what happens when I get it wrong. Too much pressure and a lot of chatter. A bit of lubrication may help, but watch, and this could be dangerous. I'll try it again. As the twist drill moves out of the way, it disengages the contact between the connecting rod and the cutter. But using a twist drill in the end of a machine vise is not the best idea that I've ever had. If I was making larger rods, like seven and a quarter inch gauge coupling rods or connecting rods, I would not use the shank of a twist drill. For using this method to machine the end of larger components, you would need to make a jig for the job. And a simple jig would be a substantial piece of square bar which could be securely clamped in the machine vise, and then by drilling a hole down through it and threading the hole, all you would have to do is fit a high tensile steel bolt into the hole using a step bush that fits into the center of the coupling rod or the connecting rod. So far I've used two files and a piece of emery cloth but really, I can't fault this flapper wheel. It doesn't remove too much material, and it's excellent. This is a smaller diameter flapper wheel, and this goes round corners a little bit better. Possibly the best small tool to use is a drum sander. The smallest of the drum sanders is ideal for this job, but you have to be very careful that it doesn't dig in. A flapper wheel in a Proxon motor tool is a very good compromise. I'm cleaning up the rest of the connecting rod just using some 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper with WD-40 as a lubricant. And once it's clean, I've painted it once again with the marking out blue that I have. This connecting rod is tapered. It goes from a quarter of an inch to an eighth of an inch at the end that's going to go into the crosshead. So how am I going to do this? I suppose I could use a file, but no, I think I'll use the milling machine because it's a lot easier. I've marked the positions on a piece of scrap steel bar and now I'm drilling holes at these points, first of all with the centre drill and now I'm using a 1 8 of an inch diameter twist drill because this is tapping size for 4BA. At the other end I need to make it tapping size for a 2BA bolt so I'm using a 5 32 of an inch diameter twist drill. 
In this clip I'm just checking that I've drilled the holes in the right place because I have been known not to. And here I'm threading one end 4BA and the other end 2BA. To avoid marking the connecting rod I'm using a washer. And I'm doing the same at the other end but I'm using two packing washers to hold the connecting rod out from the main piece of steel. If you look at this you will see that the line is parallel to the piece of steel that it's mounted on. And with the steel bar firmly clamped in the milling vise, I can commence the milling operation. Once again, you have to take light cuts. When I take heavy cuts like this, the thing really chatters. Because after all, this very small component is only held in position by a 4BA bolt and a 2BA bolt. After all your previous efforts of machining this connecting rod, now is the time to get nervous, because if this part goes wrong, and it can, then the whole thing is ruined. This is what you're going to do. You're going to get a bit carried away. You're thinking, oh yeah, this is cutting okay. And then you get a chatter mark like this and you have to remove the chatter mark. And you saw how I did it. I withdrew the milling cutter and fed the milling cutter down, taking a very shallow cut. And I do this at both ends. And then from now on, all of the cuts are very fine indeed. Originally, I started to make the first of these videos as part of the Tangy engine rebuild. And I didn't intend to use this connecting rod, but I quite like the way it's looking. So unless anything goes spectacularly wrong, I think I will probably use this connecting rod on the tangy engine that I'm rebuilding. To get a good finish, the last few cuts with the milling cutter were done without any adjustment of the hand wheel whatsoever, just passing back and forth. And now I'm using my Proxon motor tool with a very small drum sander that I mentioned earlier. And this really profiles the rod very nicely. The small end that fits in the crosshead is going to need some more machining, but I'll do that later. A final clean up with some 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper and a quick rub with some Scotch Brite, and this is what the connecting rod looks like now. The rod needs some phosphor bronze bushes making for both ends. Also, I intend to very carefully machine a slot in the top of the big end to act as an oil reservoir. I did some more shaping on this rod and finally I did use it on the engine that I was making it for. It was a very old and very badly made tangy engine but by the time I finished it it looked okay and ran very well. That's it for now, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.